So hi, Microbehunter here again, and today I would like uh, to talk about the Microscope objectives and the different types of uh, Microscope objectives. Um, when you go shopping for objectives, you will discover that uh, there are yeah quite low-cost objectives around, and there are also extremely expensive objectives. The question is, is why is that, and how are they different? And uh, there was actually one of my viewers who was asking about the differences between so-called fluoride objective and S-APO objective. So I would like to answer this question. Uh, but first, we have to talk a little bit about uh, microscope optics and, and uh, why, and, you know, why there are no single lens or at least double lens microscopes around. So, uh, for example, why don't they make uh, microscopes that have only one lens as an objective lens and then a second lens um, as an eyepiece lens? That would be the simplest type of compound microscope. As a matter of fact, the first microscopes uh, essentially only were composed of two uh, lenses. But nowadays, uh, when you open up a microscope objective, you're going to discover that there are a lot of lens elements in there, sometimes up to 10 different individual lenses of different shapes. Um, and the question is, is why is that? Um, and uh, in order to answer this question, um, I would first like to talk a little bit about uh, certain lens errors and aberrations uh, that uh, simple lenses have. And then I'd like in the second part um, later on, I'd like to talk a little bit about the different types of microscope objectives and how they take care um, of these different uh, type of, of lens errors. So first of all, important for you to understand is, is that a, 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 a lens like this um, does not uh, is not able, um, is not an ideal uh, system okay the problem is is that white light that goes through the lens um, will uh, the different colors of the white light will be refracted differently so this means that the blue light will actually uh, be yeah make a focus point further towards the lens and the red parts of the color spectrum further away. So what you actually have is, is you do not have one individual focal point, but actually a region here um, where different uh, parts of the color spectrum are in focus. So it, there's going to be fuzziness here. Um, and this basically means that uh, this is called chromatic aberration. And this basically means that you're not able to get a perfectly sharp image. And the second thing is, is that if you look at certain images, you will see that some of the images have a so-called yeah, a fringe, a color fringe around them. It's called purple fringing and yellow fringing. That uh, depending on how the light uh, strikes the object, uh, there might be either a yellow uh, yeah, fringe and at a high contrast corners or a purple one. And this not only reduces uh, the resolution, but also is not always very attractive um, if you're actually taking uh, pictures using a microscope. Um, so um, it might not be very disturbing when you do casual observations uh, um, and routine microscopy work, uh, it might be fine, but ultimately um, yeah, um, for high quality images uh, it might be a problem and also the image uh, sharpness and clarity and crispness uh, suffers a little bit. And uh, so in order to take uh, place uh, care <laughs> of this uh, chromatic aberration, um, there are different uh, types of objectives that correct for them. Um, and uh, depending on uh, more colors uh, that are focused on one point, the more expensive the objective. So I'm going to talk about this later. And the second problem is a so-called spherical aberration. And spherical aberration means that um, the light rays that go through the lens um, on the edge, what will happen is, is that they will actually be bent or refracted stronger and they are actually going to then uh, form a focal point closer to the lens and uh, those uh, parts that go through the lens more towards the center will essentially uh, focus further away. So again you have a, um, yeah, a range of different uh, yeah, uh, focal points so to say. It's not one crisp uh, image that you get but actually again a fuzziness and the question is, is to make it worse is this uh, this again depends also on the different uh, color of the light. So it's the position basically where the light goes through through the lens. Why is that? And the reason is, is that uh, the lenses for due to manufacturing purposes are spherical. Okay, so that's uh, like, a, like a section from a sphere. And uh, this is for manufacturing purposes and uh, therefore um, it is not possible for the lens to actually focus um, all of uh, the light rays down to one point. And uh, the so that's called spherical aberration, and this also has to be taken care of. And then and the third uh, is uh, yeah is is the following issue is so-called field curvature. And what you have to understand is is that the uh, when you, there's a certain distance, a focal distance, but this focal distance um, yeah is not a flat plane, but actually a is uh, yeah uh, yeah it's, it's also bent. Okay, it's not flat, but also curved. Um, because you have to always take the same distance uh, from the lens. And uh, 
This basically means that uh, when you look at an image uh, through the eyepiece, that the central part is uh, crisp and in focus, but the, the periphery, the side parts, are blurry. And uh, this is also corrected by uh, certain objectives. And this again does not really disturb when you're doing visual work because you always uh, will operate the fine focus knob anyway to focus back and forth. And at the same time, you're mostly looking only at the central part of the field of view anyway. So it doesn't really matter if the side is a little bit blurry because uh, if you want to look at something that's on the side, you're just going to move it into the center anyway. And the way that your eyes work, it also only gives you a sharp image only uh, in the central part of your vision. So that is, uh, however, very disturbing when you're taking pictures because in a photograph, um, you can, of course, not change uh, the, the view, um, but then the periphery, the sides of the photograph are, al are always blurry. I cannot refocus a photograph. So, in all, so there are essentially these three things that need to be corrected and, and uh, the more of these three things that are taken care of and the better it's taken care of, the more expensive the objective. So let's start at the, at the very lowest uh, price range. This is nowadays when you buy a microscope, um, a routine microscope, um, usually um, also used for um, educational use and routine laboratory use, um, then uh, you, these uh, microscopes always come with so-called achromatic objectives. And the achromatic objectives, what they do is, is they take care of two colors um, of the light and uh, to, they correct chromatic aberration for two colors. Comparatively, there are fewer lens elements in achromatic objectives. The image quality is reasonably good for everyday um, routine work. Um, but if you um, need a more resolution, a sharper image, um, also maybe uh, yeah, for photography work where this purple and yellow fringing is not acceptable, then you need uh, objectives that are better corrected. And the next higher level of correction um, are so-called fluoride objectives. Um, they are also sometimes referred to as semi apochromatic objectives and they're called fluoride objectives because they uh, have uh, the element fluoride in the glass. Um, so this kind of ref uh, also changes the refractive index. And uh, this, these fluoride objectives, they correct uh, more colors uh, for chromatic aberration and also more for spherical aberration. And uh, yeah, and then the next higher degree of correction, also called the apochrom apochromatic objectives. And those apochromatic objectives, uh, again, correct, uh, provide a crisper image because yet more colors are corrected um, for chromatic and for spherical aberration. And then you have the so-called the super apochromatic objectives. These are pretty specialized and they are corrected even towards the infrared light. The reason why would you actually do that is because if you're using them for fluorescent microscopy, um, then some of the wavelengths that are emitted are very red. And, and uh, you also want to make sure that they are also very crisp and in focus and so forth. So those super apochromatic objectives or s apos they um, essentially um, provide a crisp image even across a wider color spectrum. So, and that is basically the correction of chromatic and spherical aberration. But now, in, if you want to have a flat uh, field, yeah, if you also want to correct for the field curvature, then you have to get those versions that are also plan objectives. So you can get, for example, uh, achromatic objectives and plan achromatic objectives. You can get uh, fluoride objectives and uh, also plan fluoride objectives and so on. And uh, so the more of these things that you want to have corrected, the essentially the more complex the lens becomes and the more expensive the lens becomes. And one thing that you have to also know is, is that the price of the, um, le um, the objectives really explodes. Uh, yeah, so um, achromatic objectives are relatively cheap, but then uh, those ap apochromatic plan objectives, I mean, they can cost, uh, especially the highly magnifying one and the good ones, I mean, they can cost several thousand, several thousand euros or, or dollars just for one um, objective alone. Um, but they have very specific um, applications sometimes, and it's a uh, questionable whether um, amateurs or you know, would actually use them. And for educational use, I would definitely not uh, not go into that direction. Now, let's say that you're interested in really upgrading a microscope uh, to yeah, include those um, high performance objectives. Let's say that this is um, an, in your interest. And as a matter of fact, um, I did receive already several times a request on uh, upgrading microscopes. Um, but if you already want to go into that direction where you really want to go fluoride objectives, semi-apochromatic objectives, uh, fluoride objectives or apochromatic objectives, this is really what you want. 
then I have to admit is, is then probably um, it's you have two possibilities. Either you go shopping on the second-hand market um, and you find uh, yeah objectives with a 160 millimeter DIN standard, um, which you can then fit maybe to your microscope. That would be one possibility. Um, or the second possibility is, is that you actually contact one of the larger microscope manufacturers like Olympus, Zeiss, Nikon or Leica. Um, and uh, then you're able to um, obtain, yeah, choose objectives uh, from a wide range, uh, yeah, wide from a wide range of different objectives that you manufacture for all different specific applications. Um, and then you basically call up the company and you say you, you want to have a certain microscope and they will put together the microscope based on your needs based on the objectives requirements that you have. You got to tell them which objectives they have to put yeah, on your microscope. Yeah, but you have to be aware that this is going to be really expensive. Um, um, so um, it's probably worth uh, considering um, sometimes what you actually want to observe um, and is it actually really necessary um, to invest in a plan objective, for example, if your um, eyepieces only show a small field of view anyway, and if you're not interested in photography. I mean, then it probably might not be a meaningful investment. Um, is there any um, are there any disadvantages beside price, beside cost for um, of those highly corrected objectives, like for example, apochromatic objectives, um, okay, they're expensive. Is there a disadvantage? Yes. Um, they sometimes have a significantly smaller working distance. So the distance between the, the slide or the cover glass and the objective is, is can be significantly smaller um, than for other objectives. And if you want to f uh, find this out yourself, then I recommend that you visit uh, the web pages of one of those large microscope manufacturers that I just mentioned and download a yeah the, the table with uh, where they're comparing all of the different uh, microscope objectives and they will actually also indicate the so-called the working distance and uh, you can see that those uh, the more highly corrected they are um, sometimes also the working distance is significantly smaller and this of course also means that there are some practical uh, limitations to it you got to be careful that uh, also the sample is very small and very thin and 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 Okay, um, so I, I'm just saying that uh, it's not always an advantage and one has to consider a little bit carefully whether the things that you want to buy actually also uh, give you the personal benefit that you're expecting. Yeah, so that is uh, basically um, all I wanted to say for right now. Um, there are plenty of uh, resources also available if you want to read up on this. Uh, there are some excellent uh, online articles uh, that um, also compare this a little bit. But I think uh, for right now, I think that's enough. Uh, yeah, leave your comments, uh, like and subscribe, of course. A thank you to all of my supporters um, and patrons. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.